Young Chan? Young Chan? Young Chan? All right, he's dead again. Young Wan, we're going to come to you again. Yep. All right, at this point? Great. Okay. All right. So could we move toward the section here of the program? Okay. Your attention, please. Um, and the names here are up here on the wall. So Paul O is going to fill Actually, in. Actually, you know what? I, he's so going to start. Young, young, young Wan is going to start. Yeah. So, so let's get Young Wan in. Yeah, he's going to get here. And then Joe will talk a little bit. And then Paul will fill in anything that we left out. Um, so um, basically, we want to have people introduce themselves and then say what this program is all about. Let's, is that enough? Go ahead. Yeah, that sounds great. Can yeah. everybody hear me? We can. OK, great. Hi, everyone. My name is Young Wan Choi. I'm here in Oakland, California, and uh, working on the Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age initiative. Um, and I just give a little bit of background on our project, um, which is um, to say that uh, I think it's really inspired by a desire to address um, what I like to call the civic empowerment gap. Uh, and by that, I mean um, in our um, in studies of schools nationally, we've seen that um, students of color and poor students have really reported um, fewer opportunities to ha have access to a civic education or civic engagement opportunities uh, in school. Um, and so um, what that means ultimately is, is not just um, a challenge with what they face during their uh, high school experience, it's, it has major implications for their life post um, you know, post high school. And so um, one of the other things that we know is that the opportunities that young people have um, when they're in high school are directly um, or have an impact on the kinds of um, activities that they'll get involved in later in life. So those who have civic engagement opportunities, service learning, um, the, the opportunity to consider um, ballot initiatives or political candidates have mock elections and debates um, that these kinds of things lead to young people um, participating uh, in political and social change later in life. And so if we're not providing those kinds of opportunities across the board to all students, then uh, what we're doing is we're simply replicating the social and political inequities that we see in our society. And so uh, particularly here in Oakland, given who our student population is primarily, um, you know, we have a lot of students of color, a lot of um, students on free and reduced lunch, uh, this kind of initiative is absolutely essential because what we're saying is that uh, we want to provide these opportunities for all students, uh, not just so that they have them in high school, but so that they develop a kind of civic identity that leads to political and, and social participation uh, later in life. So that's kind of the inspiration for the work. Um, over the last year, we, and this is the second year of the project, so during the first year, uh, we had a, a number of teachers. Can, can yeah. I, sorry, I just want to, your, your passion jumped you right in the middle of it. I don't know if you clearly introduced yourself, though, or I didn't. Um, as okay. you're talking about the, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So should I just, well, so um, I, yeah. I guess by introduction of myself, I'll say that um, I, I've been a high school teacher uh, or was in the classroom for about 10 years, and I taught um, in New York City, uh, Providence, Rhode Island, um, in Gwangju, South Korea, and um, most recently in Oakland, California. Uh, and so I've been in the role of um, supporting and coordinating the activities around this initiative, the Educating for Democracy and the Digital Age Initiative. This is in its second year, and I've, I've been with the project since the beginning. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about myself. Thanks. And um, I'll just say that... Uh, you know, just to sort of wrap wrap it up, um, is to say that there's three um, critical areas that we've identified, um, and we meaning the teachers as well as the staff of our project. And buckets are issue analysis, taking action, and reflection. Uh, and with each of those, there are particular considerations that I think are um, unique for the digital age, and, and this comes out of a lot of research that um, our colleagues at Mills College have done, um, Joe Kahn and Ellen Middaw and others. Um, and so when we talk about issue analysis, uh, one of the big challenges around issue analysis is 
um, that there's so much information that young people have in the digital era. Uh, and so part of the implications for instruction in the classroom means that we have to help students think about the credibility of what they're looking at. How do they discern what's relevant and reliable information? Uh, so when they're analyzing an issue that, they, that they're considering those kinds of biases uh, and perspectives um, as they begin to form their own opinions. Uh, and so that's something that's different. It's not that we didn't ask students to do this before, but just because of the way in which they have access to more information and potentially information from a wider variety of sources um, than they ever had before, um, credibility becomes really important. Um, the second bucket, taking action, um, one of the things uh, that the research has shown is really is unique about the digital era is that there are fewer gatekeepers. Uh, and so whereas before the political parties and national organizations were really um, vital gatekeepers for part participation. And if you weren't uh, a voting age, it became very difficult to participate in any kind of political work. Um, it's much easier uh, in this era to um, start a, you know, move on or a sign on.org petition or um, mobilize a social network um, that, that's already in place uh, around an issue. Um, it's, there's there's more opportunity for action without uh, necessarily having to go through those traditional gate, gatekeepers. And then finally, around reflection, um, one of the things that we know about young people these days is that they that they tend to put a lot of things about themselves online that um, we may not have gone public with in the past. And so, what whereas um, I grew up writing in a journal that I never showed anybody, um, you know, students write on blogs or they write you know, uh, on their Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, uh, and they're reflecting about their lives or they're posting about their lives, but it's in a very public way and it has a significant digital afterlife. And so this also has implications for when we ask students to reflect on their learning, um, both that there's opportunity because public reflection allows for dialogue uh, and for developing deeper reflection, but it also has particular challenges. Um, so I want to invite everybody um, there to really think with us, because I think we're, we're grappling with this question of what does educating for democracy in the digital age mean, and what's, what's different about it, and what are the implications for instruction. Uh, and in particular, I think we have the opportunity to think about uh, one particular slice of this question, which is, um, and I heard a lot of it coming up in the way in which um, uh, when Paul took me around with the microphone earlier, uh, I heard I heard it in a lot of your conversations, but there there is this question of voice and audience, and so I would pose it as a question in this way, which is to say, um, if students develop a voice, and we help them have an authentic audience for that voice, is that civic action? Is that civic engagement? Um, and I and I hope that we can sort of revisit that question over the course of this session. Super. Thank you so much. Oh, and sorry, I should also say that um, Stan Pesek and Paul O, who are, uh, I think both of whom are in the room, uh, have been really critical in this work. Uh, and so if they're there, I'd love for them just to wave and say, say hello so you know that we have, we've infiltrated uh, inside of the session as well. Cool. And Joe, are you still there? Mm, somehow. Okay, we'll figure that out. Uh, you are still there. Good. I am right here. Hi. Oh, good, good. Okay, good. You want to make sure. So, um, I, I want to encourage before Paul talks. I um, want to encourage anybody to say, "I have this burning question I want to ask right now." Um, please let us know. Does anybody have one you'd like to ask right now? <laughs> Already? No. Okay. So that's good because I wasn't going to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. Uh, I, I really want to talk. So uh, it's great to see Joe and Young Juan. And your, your youth, Joe. I also did want to point out that Stan Pesek, if he could raise his hand, is here. So Stan actually could talk more about uh, this project. Um, Stan, Stan can introduce himself. Um, I'll just say that I work for the National Writing Project. Um, we're based in Berkeley. And our role in this project is to really think about the, um, the affordances of the digital possibilities, um, the, the the ways in which the digital is having an impact on what does it mean to be um, civically engaged today. So uh, in a general way, that, that is our role. And I just wanted to quickly say a couple of things. Um, one is that uh, 
In relation to the, the, the three buckets um, that Young Juan talked about, I think holistically what's true for young people, um, we see this in Oakland and I'm sure you see this in your school districts, is that um, you know, our youth are, are crafting online identities. And I think uh, you know, one of our questions um, as well is what does it mean to, uh, for youth and young people to develop um, civic identities uh, online um, and in online spaces? And uh, that's actually a question that is also really, that, that's being taken up by um, a network that involves some of the people from Mills College, uh, the group that we're doing this work with, um, but in a broader sense. Um, so if you, so who, who here saw the plenary this morning with Henry Jenkins? Um, great. So this notion of participatory culture is actually also informing um, this broader conversation that we're having with people like Henry Jenkins, um, with uh, Howard Gardner, um, with other groups uh, facing history and ourselves um, as part of something called the Youth and Participatory Politics Network. Uh, and, and that work um, has this broader context that, um, of which the, the Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age work is a, sort of an instance of, and there are several projects like this around the country. Um, and we're, as part of YPP, we're developing this you know, broader framework to think about well, what does it mean for youth to engage in um, politics today? Uh, so I just wanted to give that broader framework and, and really explain why the National Ryan Project is interested in this work. Um, it's for all the reasons that Henry talked about and the, the plenary people talked about this morning. Um, and it is really about uh, this notion of, in a very fundam fundamental way, um, you know, what is the, the sort of education, what is the kind of, uh, what is the kind of, um, person that we would hope would come out of our experiences, both in school and out. And I think that's the other piece that I just wanted to add to what Young Wan said. You know, our project really does, um, this Educating for Democracy in the Digital Age project, really does see that, you know, with the affordances of the digital, uh, learning happens all the time. I mean, that's true for us and that's true for our youth. And so we also are really trying to work with partners um, to think about what what kind of civic learning, what kinds of civic engagement can happen in out-of-school contexts as well as in school. Um, so where, where are the ways in which we can partner? Um, and uh, yeah, I think, I think that's it. Um, but You can keep talking later. No, no, <laughs> that's great. But I, I just I wasn't sure if Stan wanted to add anything to this. Sure, if you want to at least introduce yourself a little bit, Stan, sure. how you're I'm, part of the project. Uh, I'm Stan Pesek. And, um, when the project started, I was history coordinator for Oakland Schools, and so it was National Writing Project at Mills College who came to Oakland to partner on this project. We kind of jumped to the opportunity, and we spent a couple of years, a year piloting the project. And one of the things we wanted to do with this was to not just think about the civic education, but the and, and digital piece, but also think about how this weaves into day-to-day -day classroom life. So it involves teachers who are, teach English history, grades 9 to 12, so it's got a vertical strand. So when Joe's students are doing a senior project, what skills do they have and what knowledge they need and skills to develop, but how does it start in ninth grade consciously and build those into the day-to-day -day practice of classrooms to teach world history or U.S. history, what it look like in those, in those places too. So it's an ambitious project, it's a challenge. Great. Super. Joe, we're more or less on time. Are you okay? Um, you're, you're on your, teach, your break, right? Yes, okay. I am. You still have more time to talk to us, I hope? I yeah. do, I do, I do. Now it's on my conference period. I have a few students okay. in the room, so. Um, Thank you for giving us your conference period. I really appreciate no it. worries. This is fun. This is always fun. So, so um, mm -hmm. in terms of introduction and the work we do, uh, yep. gosh, is that the question? Start with yourself. Myself? Yeah. It's a complicated <laughs> self. Okay, uh, let's see myself. My hero, how about that? My hero is Yoda, and so I take all advice from Yoda, which is great. Um, but I, am, I teach in Oakland. I live in Berkeley. I have three children, uh, two of whom are teenagers, uh, one who is a kindergartner. So a lot of my, um, what I care about in the classroom in terms of digital literacy stems from just being a mom and understanding that the world out there is really crazy and then seeing that in my own house and, and having to deal with that as a parent um, that definitely gets carried into the work as a teacher so that's me and then how the teacher part of me is it's I don't know it bleeds back and forth uh, so the work we do here and I, I teach senior English this year I have looped with one set of my kids uh, so this is my second year with them and it's it's absolutely wonderful 
in one respect. And then I have another uh, media academy class that I teach, and then I teach AP class. And so that's my teaching line, gentlemen. And my kiddos are excited. They're over here. Um, and right now, I teach. I have two functions. I teach senior project, which is a graduation requirement, and I also teach uh, senior English, and we study third world lit. And a lot of the theme, themes that run through both, uh, this theme of social equity and change, uh, we, we practice skills, we practice lens questions uh, that then apply to both. So the kids, they're feeling two graduation requirements, but the skill sets are similar. What I love about the digital literacy aspect, though, is that they can publish their work so authentically and in the moment like they did today and get and just have conversations with people and make connections and see how their work in the classroom then where it can apply, who it's important to, um, outside. And, and it's, it's, it's truly amazing when we can get out of the bubble of our own classroom. So teachers in the room, you know that. It, it's, it's, we, we operate in a bubble sometimes where it's difficult to do that. Um, and the kids just they loved it. That whole experience this morning, you guys don't know that, what that will do right now for their senior project. And it, it gave them a boost that they really needed just to notice, to know that there are people out there that do care about the work they're doing in here. So that's a lot of what we, uh, where I go with the teaching is how do we get, um, how do we get exposure to the work uh, and how do we get the kids to understand that their voice is very important. Um, and we do that through blogging a lot, but we do that through, through a lot of other methods. Um, and I love it that the people in the room that I know, Stan, Paul, Young Wan, um, and Paul, uh, they, they, they really push that we share our work as teachers. Um, which has been very important, especially in the last two years, and a lot, all of that's been very virtual, digital. So it, it's amazing. Can Can you break that down a little bit? Because which you've part? talked other times about leadership and moving into leadership roles because of this project. Oh yeah. Um. So wow, that's been that's been interesting. Um. So not at first, I didn't understand. I, I felt like we were breaking ground in the classroom, um, with some of the practices we had. So blogging as like a routine. But I didn't understand that a lot of other people who, yes, are professed tech tech geeks like myself, like how do they how do they bring that into the classroom? I didn't I didn't know that they weren't doing those those things or they were they were challenged there because it's it's a it's a lot of who um, I am to, to 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 have a device and to be to be savvy like that. But it's also um, when it comes to the students and understanding like that's where they are at as well. Uh, you got to talk about that in, in in your with your PD teams with your teachers how how do and we always talk about how do we form these connections and 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 we talk about how how do we get how do we vibe with the students more so that they understand that the learning is relevant and that's the bigger question and one of the aspects one of the ways it's it's addressed is through technology and through active engagement with the community and so in terms of leadership roles you know a lot of this work that we do here is it bleeds into a lot of the other PD that we're doing at the school when it comes to, say, um, equi equity-based teaching, when it comes to curriculum design through and, and, and improving the rigor. It, it does, it factors into that. And so I've just started to just, not just working with teachers at my site, but, but feeling a, a stronger voice in this community, this digital learning community of teachers that are trying new things. Um, but also in, in my, with my own students, because we're on the same journey, it's, it's, we, it's watching and being a part of something as a teacher where you don't necessarily have to, you're not leading the classroom. They are all, all of the students, if we have this culture here now of, a, of collaborating on things. And so I don't always have to be a leader. It's, it's amazing. And, then, uh, and I think that that's, that's been the best part of it all is that the students are just, they take over a lot in a very positive, positive way. Uh, and so when I can say that to people, to other educators, and then they can feel that, it, it's, it's that, that's where I feel like, okay, cool. Like this, this whole taking on a different role as a leader, it doesn't hurt. It's not too, it doesn't freak me out too much. But it's been a different year this year because of, of, of it all. So. A little conversation. Who wants to throw in here? Yeah, please, somebody else talk. I just feel like I went on and on. <laughs> Oh, I have but don't be shy. Chris Sloan. Hey, Joe. Um, you know how my, my students um, comment a lot on yours? Yeah. Um, on usevoices.net. Okay. On usevoices. Which we're going to get to. It's on usevoices.net. Yes. Can yes. you talk about maybe how that, does, do you see that conversation um, helping them as thinkers and writers and maybe how 
uh, that plays out in your class? Yeah, I do. Um, a lot of the topics that my students are bringing to the table, because half of their blog postings are about their senior research, and it's about equity topics in communities that run deep, so we can talk about, you know, maybe police brutality. Uh, you heard some of my, my other kiddos with, you know, child marriages, things that are very real to them. And what helps in the thinking is not just, it's connecting with somebody else who's far away. Um, so understanding that there's a world beyond Oakland, which is very big for them. Um, and when they are prompted to question what they believe, and it comes from a peer, that is very valuable to them. So oftentimes, you know, I have teachers that would respond back to the students in their blogs. But the students value the other students and those words more so than they do. Um, the grown-up in a way because the kid that they're talking to knows where they're coming from on a developmental level like you know just just knows what they're feeling and they can say it in a way that you know I think I'm cool and can say things a certain way but the kids can talk to each other and so yes it does push their thinking and you know some students get you know 10 to 12 comments uh, off of one posting that's very powerful stuff when you've gone through many years of your life not not thinking, thinking that people don't listen to you, and then suddenly you've got gobs of people listening and saying something back to you. Um, even if that dialogue doesn't continue, uh, back and forth, back and forth, uh, there's this action of somebody responded, and so then my students are then more prone to respond or, or think that that's important. Um, so it helps them with the issue they're posting about, but it also just helps them in, in, in terms of a skill of learning how to listen. I have a question. Cool. Say your name. My name is mind. Carla Treatman. I teach at Wairika High School in far northern California. Um, and my question is, in the blogs and where students are responding to each other, um, how do you teach them the proper way, and I don't even know if that's the right terminology, um, to respond? Uh, the, what brings this up, we just had a huge issue with our dance contract at our school. And there was, you know, kids were very vocal in what they thought the dance contract should be, how they thought that should be navigated. And to me, that's civic engagement. That's a concern for our community that kids are really engaged in. But the language usage that they had um, kind of minimized their argument. And, and that, that process of teaching kids how to interact civically, I wonder how you guys have, have navigated that. Well, we can say, I mean, Joe, you can talk to that too, but we can say very quick, we're going to spend a, the last 20 minutes here um, mm -hmm. looking at that exactly. So, right. Right. yeah. You will do. So, thank you for asking thank that you. question. And but other thoughts? Oh, well, I just want to add before, um, yeah. in response uh, that, that Chris Sloan actually wrote a piece at the Digital Is website um, that is about this notion of civic um, dialogue in online spaces. And actually, you know, it's a, it was a complex piece, but um, or a complex story, but uh, we should definitely share with you That'd be great. The, the link to that. Other questions, points that you wanted to get out here in the room? Anybody? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm, Your Bar name. I'm Barbara, yeah. and I teach in Idaho. So my question is, is our sophomore lit is now called World Lit, which is what I'm hearing is your senior lit. And then you talked about calling it third world lit, and my, of course, my community would actually have a cow over that. <laughs> I'm serious. It would be the end. Northern, no, northern, up by Canada. Yeah. And, you know, as far as the civic, you know, and she tried doing an, you know, an eastern, an eastern section um, of the lit as a sophomore teacher of mine huge blowing up, you know, as far as like, oh, they're actually reading from the Quran or they're actually e reading from whatever. And as far as, you know, how do you deal with that as far as being civic? I mean, this idea of a, a world citizen, they also had a concern about, we're not members of da-da-da, we're United States. I mean, that's, we're United States citizens, not blah, blah, blah. That's the issue we're seeing. Joe, you have any response to that? <laughs> um, I do, and that's that. That goes back to that being part of of the networks of of being in, and being in a forum like this, and being able to hear what the experiences are of other educators around. I go back to Oakland, and and that is what we need to talk about. Um, that is what our population wants to learn about. So when I, and I say third world, that we're you know we're basically looking at 
um, what what they what the people that they look like have gone through. So in terms of addressing um, in terms of that concern, I guess I'm I'm spoiled. I'm going to put that in super air quotes uh, that I don't I can I I can talk to those texts. I, I can talk with those texts with the kids. And um, I do have to keep in mind though when I tell the kids, you, you are lucky that we get to study this because there are other places where, um, uh, forgive me, uh, where it's only canonical dead white men literature, and and it's 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 you read that too, but but they should know that they that this is this is we are trying to use the literature to 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 get them to connect, and that's 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 where I'm that's what I'm saying right now with them. Um, so I really haven't had addressed that much. That that aspect here, we we teach, uh, yeah, because I don't know. I'd be denying my entire class what it means for them to be part of a, a, a citizen citizenry um, because they are constantly excluded. Um, so that would be my answer for the folks that would say something. I, I, wonder, sure. I wonder if Young Juan has a thought. Yeah, about I was, was going to say the same. Yeah. Anything that's gone on in the past uh, half hour, you've been out there listening. <laughs> Anything you're thinking right now? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I think that that's. I don't know if there's a particular point you want me to address, Paul. Uh, Paulo, I don't know when you when you were asking me to come into the conversation. Well, I just I just wondered if you had a thought about this notion of um, you know what 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 does it take uh, I guess to to alter curriculum in the way that I think you're describing um, and to be able to do that in a way that um, you know I suppose both honors the the interests in the community but also you know broadens those perspectives right I mean I think this is a tension that we um, think about a lot within our project which is tension around um, you know leading from student interest and also expanding student interest because I, I I think that um, on the and and I think you know I don't think what Joe is saying is just, is that you know we're only going to teach the things that are you know that come out of the community that are directly written by people who look like the students. Um, I think that would be very uh, limiting, both in terms of their exposure to to different kinds of ideas and perspectives, but also in terms of their access to uh, the canon, which I think does have you know huge relevance when it comes to you know social capital and 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 being able to navigate college and that sort of thing. Um, so I think that we're, we're, we're looking to strike a balance, you know, and I think every teacher has to figure out that balance in their own classroom of, like, how much um, do we, you know, how do we, how do we honor and recognize our students for who they are and what they bring to the classroom and their life, their, their history, their culture, their traditions, their life experiences. Uh, and in Oakland, that's not a uniform thing. That's a really... Multifaceted um, set of you know set of experiences, um, as you could tell just from seeing the student from Yemen who was in Joe's class, as well as um, you know just getting a quick little snapshot there. Um, but at the same time, how do we also um, help them to be aware of the the broader world? And I think you know what Joe's talking about in terms of the blog is is an opportunity to see and interact with people outside of Oakland and I think we get really insular in not only in our classrooms but in Oakland in our sort of liberal um, bubble over here <laughs> that uh, and I think that we don't um, we have an opportunity I should say through um, these kinds of networks like Youth Voices to, to broaden the conversation to have our students begin to consider what their ideas mean in relationship to other people uh, and not just the people that they spend um, time with face to face, but you know what are the implications in in a global world and and, and nationally. And can, can I just add quickly? Um, the, one of the things that I think a number of teachers have been talking about uh, in relation to issue analysis is this notion of bias and perspective. And I can imagine that. Um, so so I, I mean I think that that means a, a lot of different things in different places. But I think it is to me a legitimate point of inquiry. You know, so so what is bias? What is uh, you know what? How do we understand different perspectives? And what are the texts that are going to present you know these opportunities to understand bias and perspective? Um, so so I think you know if, if that is the thing that you're investigating. Um, which I think is is a part of this project, you know, this notion of um, issue analysis. Then I think, uh, you know, our youth then have to be open to exploring different possibilities. 
I mean, I don't know if that's something that would fly, you know, with with a, with a group. But I mean, I think it's 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 our general understanding of that's what we want to present to our kids. And you know, our hope is that actually that that is a notion that is portable and scalable and could be implemented in other places. I understand that's yeah. Yeah, when we talked about reading this in the, in the classroom, so in history, considering multiple perspectives is at the core of the discipline. Right, you have to look at multiple perspectives, and how do you, how does that learning that history help you take those skills and apply them outside? Mm -hmm. um, and democracy requires you to cross cultural boundaries, pull on your own what you know, but also to cross cultural boundaries. So when you say you can't teach these certain texts, it makes me sad because mm -hmm. those students aren't going to be engaging in democracy when we envision it. That kind of crossing boundaries. Okay, so when we were planning this, we wondered if we would get through this whole thing and never say what Youth Voices was. Um, and we have done workshops like that, so I want to take a minute <laughs> to, to say what Youth Voices is and then give you some experience in it. Um, and um, by showing you some of Joe's work, which is all around, Joe's students' work, so <laughs> which is all around the room here. Chris Sloan here, and I started, <laughs> um, um, and, and some others. Um, in the National Writing Project, started Youth Voices now 10 years ago. Um, we've been on different platforms, um, and we are delighted to be where we are now. It's a pretty secure place, and we, um, in the middle of the table, you will find lots of cards. Please take all of them if you'd like to, and this one will show you how you and your students can sign up. That's one very important thing about Youth Voices. There's a, hopefully a pretty low point of entry. But more importantly, one of the things, and Chris can talk about this as we go perhaps too, but one of the things we learned really, really fast is what you were saying, uh, I'm sorry, about, about responding. Um, and um, we spend, if it's fair to say, we spend a lot of time on commenting. So my students comment uh, between four and eight times before they even post the first time, right? Mm -hmm. So learning how to comment on a social network like this is really important. There are, let me just say a little more, there are about a dozen. I, I come from the New York City Writing Project. There are about a dozen schools in New York City that are on the site, and about a dozen throughout the country, and you know, more and more um, all the time. Um, and we're really happy that Joe and her students and some other folks in Oakland are coming on as well um, as, as we go. We can answer some questions. Um, I want to give you an experience of it, though, if we can do that. Uh, and we use these differently. I'm just going to own this part of it. <laughs> Chris, as Chris's students maybe don't use the guides as much, I think, in some cases. But in the middle of the table is something that says on a general discussion response. So this is an activity that we want you to do, and then we'll talk about it. Fair enough? OK. Um, and uh, so Joe's students, one of the things that she has them do is write this really, I, Joe, this is going to put that out but a really tight kind of five paragraph thing where there are five things they have to answer about their project at the beginning. And they post that on new voices and kind of get a response. And those are hanging up around the wall. So what we'd like you to do is get up <laughs> and uh, get some energy and find a post up there that you would like to respond to. And it's not going to be fake. We really, really want you to respond to that student. OK? And we want you to use this guide to do that. Um, these guides, I'll say very briefly, are obviously they look like fill in the blank at first. But if you look a little more deeply, they're just very structured kind of rhetorical structures that we ask students to do um, and guide them in, in responding. They can let go of the details as soon as they kind of understand what they're doing. We're asking you to choose either the first one, probably this one on top, or the second one here. So you're in task right now, and we'll do it in hopefully 10 or 15 minutes, so you might not finish, but at least start. Go up and find a question that you think is interesting or important or that you would like to respond to, and sit back down and do some writing to that student. If you want to do it right on Youth Voices, you can. If you want to do it on paper first, you can do that too. Okay, we'll show you how to find it. You can search for the title, is one way to do it. So first, you need to find one, and feel free to peruse and watch. I'll show, more than once, so don't worry if you've, uh, you know, I'll show you guys what they're doing. 
if you pick one, somebody won't be able to do that one too. Uh, oh, you got some students there? Go ahead. Okay. We can we can do both things. <laughs> Is that okay? Um, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're multitasking. Go baseball. for it. I'm yeah. not. Here. Okay. Frank, sit here. Hold it. Come here. No, go ahead. Have your students talk about their projects, if you don't okay. mind. Go ahead, Frank. You see yourself? Here. Talk I about what you're, what you're studying. <laughs> oh, I was studying on teens using marijuana. Cool. Oh, oh more? <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, you yeah. Know That's hilarious. <laughs> Okay. Are you are you the young man who um, who my student my sixth grader responded to and you're wondering how to respond back? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what was that like to have my sixth grader respond to your questions about marijuana? Uh, it was challenging because I didn't know how to how to answer the question without influencing him in a negative or positive way. So mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out a way to tell him the good and the bad, but don't encourage his opinion on it or like influence him to go. Either way. Yeah. But so, have you finished that response? I haven't seen it yet. Did you? No, I didn't post it. Okay. But I will. I was. So post what's up, man? Well, he's waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna post it. Right now. Right hey, now. Frank. So, look, Frank, you know what? So sorry, guys. You can, it's just so bad. <laughs> I'm glad to talk to you. Um, his name's Devante, and he's um, like he is. Uh, I, I think it's okay. Says so he is issues in his family, right, around drugs and stuff. And he recently, in his art class, and he just put this up on Youth Voices, you might find it, um, created a superhero um, who, when that superhero cries, um, he gets energy all over his body, right? And Devante is somebody who is hard to control. He gets energy all over his body all the time. Mm -hmm. So, and, and what, that, what that superhero is trying to respond to is um, people taking drugs in the community. So... Yeah, so just to add to your burden here a little bit. Yeah, I'm a, <laughs> now I gotta think about how I'm gonna respond to him. Yeah. I, I, Frank, I, this is Young Juan from Oakland, um, and uh, I had a question for you, which is, um, what makes you? Because um, I don't think that every person would have been that thoughtful about, you know, not wanting to influence him one way or the other in the way that you responded, and I'm wondering how you came to that, if that was just something, you know, is that just a way that you are in the world, or is it is that an influence of somebody else who really uh, instilled that kind of value of, of, of not trying to, you know, um, cajole other people into your, into your beliefs or something? Because when he replied to my post, he was like, oh, drugs are bad, and you're, you're like, you're young, you shouldn't be doing drugs, so I want to keep that same mind frame for him, but I don't want him to think, okay, Drugs are not good. His his main argument was, you if you're not if you're not of age, you shouldn't do drugs. So, I think he had enough understanding of drugs enough at his age level. So I don't want to tell him more or not enough about it because he's at a good point. He's mm -hmm. like at a point where he's he's oh, he's aware, but he's not too curious about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't want to tell him from something that might interest him. Like you look cool when you do it. Maybe they think mm -hmm. you look cool. He sounds like he's smart enough to know not to do it, so that's why I don't want to like influence him to do it. Great, thanks. One of the things I'd like to underline is that we're right in the middle of your research process, right? And and you're already publishing about it and getting feedback about it, so that's kind of important. Um, do you know where your project's going to end up yet? Do you nope. have any sense? No. Hmm. Any guesses? Nah, I'm not sure. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Cool. All right, so um, you can. Uh, so, uh, Joe, if there's somebody else, that's great. Um, if not, no I'm going to keep going here.